you know our grandfathers and forefathers they went for the war so their kids could just have a stable living out of being an engineer or a ca or a doctor or a lawyer and those guys worked their asses off so that they could lend that space for their kids yeah. to just have that freedom where the kids chose to be storytellers and philosophers yep. and painters and sculptors and we i mean the incredible kinds of ridiculous jobs that we now have the yep. way people are making a living right no but seriously namrata i'm so glad that you're here okay Same here. Uh, it's one of those episodes and you know conversation that i've been really looking forward to if there's one person you know i really admire in terms of you know who knows how to not only read scripts and understand what the writer or the filmmaker is trying to do but also has such an empathetic and sensitive outlook towards storytellers and storytelling mm-hmm. um i i whenever i meet someone if people ask me you know we don't have good readers wait i know a few of them <laughs> and you are definitely on top of the list so Thank you for i'm that. glad that you're here So you're currently um serving as a content development manager at Tulsi. Yes, I am. Yeah, and we're obviously former colleagues. Um yep. Let's And the stories that we're aware of. <laughs> that beautiful office. <laughs> of the course. The legend of Neil Nakra. <laughs> <laughs> um I would love for our listeners to understand what you do. It's a rather unfamiliar world for any anybody who's just breaking into the sure. industry. So it'll be great to start from what your uh, role looks like and responsibilities look like and how how do your day to day pan out you know mm-hmm. okay so uh, for a person who say does not belong to the industry at all i would put it as we are enablers you know we we are people who as my uh, you know the mentor my mentor and uh, the company co-founder chetanya he would say that we are the mums of the industry we see everything from a vantage point we know that this producer and that talent and this particular partner this is how they're shifting their tides this is how they've grown so in other words for a person who's not from the industry we are people who enable your content in some form or the other your talent needs to be heard your talent must find its due and we know people around us because of the goodwill that we've created since last 13 14 years and because of the way we are able to curate you know that nurture that voice uh we we do what we do and we started with writers and directors the thought was that hey people represent actors and people represent these you know brilliant br- brilliant uh faces they have a whole entourage around them there's a series based on them but what about the creators you know the ones the most unsung heroes how do we take care of them and we were like that that chetanya were like let's let's find them a platform and let's nurture them let's protect them from pathetic ridiculous terms on their contracts and let's get them the right monies which makes them believe that yes i can indeed have you know make a great living and a phenomenal living out of my sheer hard work and a sense of business of course and of For course sure. more than anything storytelling yeah no that's so true and okay so since you are um, you know getting your hands dirty in terms of ensuring that the writers and filmmakers get their due um, not just credit but also what is due to them in terms of contracts that they're signing um we all know that writers are not have not been paid fairly yeah you know all along and things are starting to look up but at this point in 2023 we are towards the end of it what do you feel are the major pain points right now with regards to how much they're getting paid or just in general i mean is is it our money still the is it still one of the biggest pain points right now or is it something else i think uh i think we're still uh, like we're sort of far from the point where a bit far from the po- point where we see that our writers have been very very comfortable now and money doesn't appear at all as a concern we are not there yet but i also feel like it's a bit of a vicious cycle because first of all let's just admit that there is no doubt that we are it's a it's a dream you know uh 50 years ago our i love the story about how you know our grandfathers and forefathers they went for the war so 
their kids could just have a stable living out of being an engineer or a CA or a doctor or a lawyer. And those guys worked their asses off so that they could lend that space for their kids yeah. to just have that freedom where the kids chose to be storytellers and philosophers yep. and painters and sculptors and we, I mean, the incredible kinds of ridiculous jobs that we now have, the yep. way people are making a living, right? So now we've come to this point where we're saying, let's be storytellers. I want to tell a story and I want the world to watch my story. And we are sitting in India. We are sitting in the one of, not one of them, was the most populated country in the world now. And, you know, it's like, great. So how do we hel help you get there? And if I may say what the writer really needs to do is demystify the whole aura of, oh, I want to be a writer and I want people to watch my film and be in the awe. People must realize it's also a nine to five job. Yep. It demands that sort of discipline, that grit, that those hours which are not the most fun, um, research or spaces that you're not great at, which feel like, oh, okay, this is, okay, this is why I joined this. Yes, I did, because it is very difficult to get there. So, coming back to the point, the writers were able to sustain and endure and have that discipline. Over time, just the way compounding works, are at a position where they are earning phenomenally. Fair. And they're getting their dues, they have beautiful apartments, a beautiful family, great work-life balance, they are the most humble mentors, you know, they are continuing to tell stories, they're continuing to be relevant. So clearly, without any glamour, without any godfatherly hand, it's very, very possible to get there. And I would definitely mention Sudeep Sharma to be one of those examples. But then when I say that, what about the other young up and coming writers? Yes, the most sort of difficult challenge right now is that the kind of story that I want to tell in my very personal bubble space as a writer may not be the story that my mom and dad want to watch, very simply put. So how do I tell that story? Why do I tell that story? Who do I find as a partner or producer, investor, financier to help me tell that story? Because let's remember it's a very, very expensive business. I mean, it's expensive hobby, right? And that understanding is what writers are not able to uh, completely with maturity embrace. And the producers on the other side as well are not able to find a very risky spot where they say that let's take a risk this right. is a very fascinating story let's go for it so it's that sort of a you know overtaking of this mass appeal content which i still feel is is just a very temporary phase you know like we may say that jawan aur pathani ban rahi hai bas aur aur to koi films dekhne ke liye koi aa nahi raha hai i think it's absolutely untrue cuz i feel like guys we are in this moment where after the pandemic, everybody wanted to get out of the houses and say that I want to experience things, right? Like I want to go for a concert. I want to go out, sit with my girlfriend by the sea. I want to do things which um, I haven't done all these, all these three years. And all that we did was consume cinema through, you know, Netflix and Prime and whatnot or on television. So if you have to tell them a story which pulls them back into an experiential space, it better be fucking good. And that's the challenge. That's that's such a... You actually put it right, quite well, you know, like uh, there are writers who are trying to pursue stories uh, which may not work for everyone, as if I may put it differently. Yeah. yeah. And um, there are producers who... There are far and few producers who are willing to take risks to, you know, get even some of those stories across to even see whether they may or may not work, right? So I think yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a really um, interesting dilemma to have yeah it's, you know? it's so I'm, I'm just I mean I may be of that position where I can look at it from that uh, slightly uh, easygoing perspective but I would just say that we're living in a time where our dilemma is oh how do we get our moms and dads and our relatives to come watch this narrative sure and I really believe that the answer is uh, the way you are telling that story and not the story that you're telling. Like we have 12th Feel as an example. It is with a cast that all the OTTs, all the producers were saying that Vikrant Mazi ke saad ab koi film matlab 
हेडलाइन तो नहीं कर पाएंगे हम मे बी नॉट इवन ऑन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म और दैट प्लेटफॉर्म बिकॉज ही इज़ नॉट दैट फेस वी नीड द ए लिस्टर्स बट जस्ट लुक एट वॉट देव डन एंड आई वॉच इट फोर वीक्स आफ्टर द रिलीज ऑन अ संडे इवनिंग द रूम वॉज फुल ऑफ किड्स एंड ग्रैंड मदर्स एंड मॉम्स एंड डैड्स यंग मॉम्स एंड डैड्स दे अपलॉडेड आफ्टर द फिल्म एंड दे आर नॉट फिल्म फिल्म क्राउड राइट दे नॉट फ्रॉम द फ्रटर्निटी सो इट्स पॉसिबल यू जस्ट है वे टू टेल दैट स्टोरी सो या इट्स अ लवली डिलेम टू हैव it is and i really love how you put across that you know what we are at a time that we are kind of fortunate to be able to pursue our interests in this field uh you know this this exactly what i appreciate the most about right like you're so sensitive towards everything in general and this is just to just you know what we should definitely uh, you know talk about one is definitely your experiences with working with different talent and writers in the field but also your own journey because as i understand you also started out as a screenwriting student at Whistling Woods yeah and then you joined Tulsi um let's talk about that like sure you want to be a writer but here you are also working with writers how are you finding the right balance between you know your aspirations and then also batting yeah. for your team in a way i mean uh you know it's just that when i started out um at Whistling Woods i was i have i was literally college hopping before that i wasn't able to find my grounding and i knew that it has something to do with pictures and you know te- storytelling and words and just an ad popped up and i went to whistling woods and i'm lucky enough to be able to afford the a film college many of them are not but i also would like to say that there's internet to our you know advantage and one can definitely educate themselves if they want to be storytellers today coming back to uh, the journey with tulsi you know what scared the most to me was like what sorry what was the most scary was that how does a film fucking get made i mean you think about something and that becomes a thought that's the most miraculous thing ever forget audiences forget money is right that doesn't can't be made with one person yep it needs an army so one person's dream and then bringing 100 people i mean a family doesn't come on the same ground it's so difficult to get a family sort of to think along the same direction but you get 100 people including a spot boy to an ep to anybody yep. and then they all come together and make a film they stick to discipline the schedule of it and all and it gets made then the distribution happens was the most overwhelming thing and then i stumbled upon tulsi and i was like hey these guys are doing something from ground up from just the scratch the beginning of everything the talent the storyteller and just the nurturing of it and when i joined this place i joined as a reader and then i slowly and gradually found this to be so much fun that hey this young person has money in their account because of the hustle that our team did and they're able to travel with their mom dad and also you know write the another spec of spec work of theirs that was very fulfilling very much like oh that seems like there's a purpose you know to what one is doing and to feel that way slightly early, early in life is it it moves you in many ways it shapes you in many ways and yes i did start as a screenwriter and i feel like thanks to anjum sir ashwini sir vikas sir and joey ma'am i learned so much but i use that <coughs> skill set in a direction which enables storytelling in different forms that hey if i am not sitting on the chair which is uh, of, of a storyteller i'm sitting by the storyteller and enabling them tell the story and i really feel that this perspective is a very uh, pragmatic one for those who are trying to tell stories because hey why don't you start as a creative producer why don't you start as an ad why don't you be a writer's assistant slowly find your grapples around you know the, the 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 one calling of yours and it takes time to get there so i do feel like i'm not like fully balanced with my writing skill i don't think i make a lot of time for it but i sit for 30 minutes each day and i put well, pen to paper cool. yeah. and you know i mean a few of my friends we exchange notes we tell stories so that's also happening in parallel and i've just about to begin to sort of acknowledge that 
time is limited and life is short and one must do what they really want to do so yeah. i'm finding my you know round around both the fronts i would still say i'm far away from the balance though no no i think um you spending 30 minutes every single day consistently um you i'm sure you're already seeing which is the compounding effect of uh you know just giving that time and over time like 15 hours a month and so on and so forth absolutely yeah so it, it's it's very you can just see like anjum sir used to say that tawa garam rehna chahiye hamesha right so tawa garam hai even if it is lukewarm hot kuch to pak hi raha hai us pe right correct is so correct yeah. um i want to understand which is actually one of the first questions i asked you because you keep mentioning enable i understand what it means first hand but i would love for our listeners to understand what does that mean sure um you can come at it from a responsibility slash role standpoint you can also come at it from your day to day standpoint however you feel comfortable um can you ask me the question uh, differently i just want to understand uh, how do i address <laughs> it <laughs> for sure um i don't know i can just try to understand what no no i, uh, I can it. ask you cuz i can be very vague about things you know that um don't worry i'll pull you away right in the specifics um what does enabling mean in today's ecosystem for a person sure. who reads scripts day in day out and works with uh, different kinds of stuff sure. hmm. um you know <laughs> i have a very funny example to put this forward and i don't sure. know whether that an analogy perfectly fits or not so i remember when i was a child and i grew up in a joint family and you know uh, there were like 13 14 cousins around and we would play and there are people who are alphas and there are people who are un- you know uh, underdogs and there are people who are pushovers and the ones who are alphas are the ones who are calling the shots ki nahi aaj hum chup and chupai khelenge right <laughs> and then there are and there are others who are like uh, supposed to always be the denners because the alpha person said so right and then there is your elder sister and your mom who if they notice from a distance that they they are taking advantage of her you know oh no okay. they would come and be like wait why would she give the den for the 57th time again <laughs> so if i would just put it like that i feel like what tulsi has done for writers and directors is to tell them that hey dude let us take care of things that you find a bit of a friction in taking care of which mm-hmm. is the contracts the commercials it's very difficult to tell the other person that this is what i'm worth yep. and to negotiate not everybody has that skill set and it isn't about skill set it's also about in one breath if i'm talking about how the story nurtures from here to there and i've made a very poignant spiritual point about you know i feel like the character must choose to be um giving away all their materialistic uh joys and on the other breath i'm like but i do need one like 25000 instead of 50000 it's just different very difficult dilemma for a creator so tulsi said let us just take care of this commercial aspect let us also enable your creative voice give us your script we will share feedback with you we will tell you how this is the right way to think through this and it's only a suggestion we'll help you through it we will more than anything help you with the right credits you know and so many people you know sort of see tulsi as a bit of a threat um that oh my god you know tulsi talent because you know it's they must feel that way people must feel a bit alert about the fact that somebody is rep by tulsi which means that they're going to be sorted in so many ways so yeah. i feel like these are a few things that we do for writers and directors but we also represent so many other talent like actors and you know hair and makeup artists and musicians so every person skill set requires a different uh, customized approach yep. but at the heart of it just nurturing the talent and ensuring that unka career must ban jaye to be so that's so true right i think um, what you mentioned like people uh, look at tulsi as a threat i would go on to say like people look at agents as threats in general mm-hmm. uh, simply because i feel like um, this industry for the for the longest time has been so used to just approaching talent and giving them um uh, more often than not besides the big actors a really bad deal or a deal that may not be very conducive in the long run yeah um and then there's somebody comes along uh, whether it's tulsi or whether it's any other agency or an agent who, who says that you know what i know what i'm doing you know i know what is fair and square here and this is what we want right so naturally um uh, it presents itself as a slightly tougher difficult conversation which which yeah. i understand can come across 
as a bit threatening. Yeah, and I also feel that, you know, uh, in defense of producers, because, see, the thing is that one has always this, it's like a default, right? Ki agar saap hai bagal mein to don't pet it, please. It's like that thing, right? Like you can, you, I mean, even for a cat, you may feel that way. Oh, this cat looks really scary. Possibly a Satan's child. Don't, yep. don't pet it. Yep. But maybe that cat is really sweet and kind, right? Yep. So we have to keep in mind that there's a producer out there who has, for whether it's their dad's and mom's money or their own money from stock market or whatnot, has gathered this fund for development and they are with the right intent, they have some experience. So it's also the agent's job in the current economy, which is not the brightest, I would say, at this point, to ensure that, okay, fine, this is the writer. They are uh, somewhere decently sorted with their finances. They are going to be more satisfied with their life if they tell the story by this producer who has thought through the seed of the idea and I feel like agents must say that, okay, this story must be told and hence, we're going to find a middle ground. If it's not going to be uh, this much money, fine, we'll reduce some money, but any, ensure that the film gets made. I feel like it has to be so customized and dynamic, right? Because all of us must remember that we must work with people who we like, who really want to tell stories. And more than anything, let's not forget that we're here to tell stories. Yep. We're not here to just make money because a lot of money is being made but nothing really stays you know in the gut so the writers have to just also you know ensure that they are offering us that value for what, what they're for earning sure. and for producers sure. also have to realize that the writers must get paid as well as they can yep. and agents must ensure that they, they they are not difficult in the wrong fronts yep you know that's so true that's so true it kind of um affects the entire um, reputation of uh, agents. Like if one agent pushes for something that may be unfair yeah. and leaves a bad taste in a producer's yeah. mind, then certainly it creates a different kind of an... Uh, yeah. Impact, right? yeah, which is very normal, actually. I feel like more than that, when uh, an indie film, which has been put together by the most fascinating talent and the most uh, sought-after producers with the greatest uh, you know peculiar actors in the city in the country when that indie film doesn't do well which is say made for 7 to 10 crores that's a loss because you know if that doesn't do well then that other producer who thought that I will make commercial film with one indie film his hope is that he will fall down there he's like no he didn't make that then why will he make that so that that is a that's the challenge right now. Like people have to like really work hard, man. Yep. Don't give us first yep. drafts. Don't shoot the first drafts. Yep. And isn't it the most evident thing? Like you can see that there's a sincere work out there. That's very evidently visible. And you can also see when there's shoddy work out there. It just exactly. can't be. Yeah. You can't hide it. In yeah. in with great VFX, with great you know makeup, with the greatest actors out there. That's just right at the center of it. That, oh, I made this in the fourth draft without proper edit. Ke bana di thi. Yep. That's the biggest challenge in my opinion. No, that's so true. And do you feel like the pressure of uh, getting it right and keep writing or keep getting to the 12th draft, 15th draft rests more on people who are newcomers or people who are relatively new in the industry versus somebody who is like, at the top you know, is in a, uh, is at a position to quickly make films, and they they are in a much more um, exploiting position where they just you know for the churn of content they keeping keep making content. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, you know. I feel like pressure is a luxury. Okay. Uh, pressure is a beautiful thing. You know, like if if I feel the pressure of a deadline in a very holistic way, it means that there is something that. I am accountable for. Mm -hmm. There are people who are relying on me and my reliability marks will go down if I don't get to the end of this. Um, and at the broadness of it, I have a job, right? So pressure is a luxury. Now, it's also about the conscience of a writer. There are young writers who, yes, of course, will be more tested because it's just the most usual thing. Like, if there is a, say, um, say a 
friend who has to become this BTS person for a film and I have seen his photography and him capturing the most beautiful cats in the colony but my producer friend hasn't seen anything of, of any BTS nature in the past I have faith in my friend but that producer does not have faith in my friend simply because he does not know whether he will be able to handle the pressure of the the set whether he will be able to sub know how to download a raw file into a proper JPEG, whatever. Yeah. So they will test them. They will have those, um, you know, phases of filters that, oh, is this person's story worth being told? Um, are they good to work with? Let's talk to this writer to understand whether they're actually um, collaborative in nature. How do they see their film? And if there is a respect in the room, then I feel like that's fine. But with senior writers, which is a little heartbreaking to be honest, there are some who are the greatest of examples and we've seen them be so consistent, but then there are others who who have stopped working that hard. They found that platform, they found that, you know, uh, acclaim and that fame, after which they felt that, all right, this is, this is easier for me, but it is easier for you, but that's also your job to work harder, you know, in ensuring that you grow well. Anjum sir, I remember, said this in one class that uh, if you make a terrible film, the next film that you make, if it's great, amazing. And if it's not, people wouldn't expect much from you. But if you've made a first great film, then your torture only increases, right? Because <laughs> yeah. you're like, fuck, this is so good, now the writer will make what will happen, now the story will be done, 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 now the So much pressure, like all eyes on you, right? You have to put it all aside and you have to really, really work hard. You have to have the most brilliant work ethic. That's why you're a senior writer. That's so true. That's what it means. But some senior writers, aren't operating from that work ethic space and they have the luxury of time, they have the luxury of a family and a beautiful apartment and, you know, great agents and the world wants to work with them. But I, I just feel like we look up to them too. We, we, we are like hanging to our dear lives, hoping that they age well because if they age well, then there's a hope we can age well. And then on the other side, we have great examples like Navdeep Sudeep. You see what they're doing, right? I mean, it's just... I just want to go ahead and say that it's possible to be represented by great agents, have a life, uh, not go through a ca casting couch experience, not go through terrible parties in case you don't want to go there. I mean, if you're a party animal, please go ahead. <laughs> and make a living simply based on hard work and training. Yep. You can do that. Yep. And on top of that, not be an asshole, be a nice person. Yep. It's very possible, you know. That is the dream, honestly. And that needs discipline. That needs discipline and I think... Um, I'm speaking too much. Of course, you <laughs> you're meant to speak here. This is where you speak, okay? Um, but honestly, like coming from you, somebody who's worked with some of the finest uh, talent in the industry, it's something that we all can learn from. And um, I recently read this quote uh, from someone, I don't remember the name, but uh, here she said that... Um, if you are humble enough to understand that you can keep growing, plus you're easy to work with, then you can be dangerous. You know, everybody would really want to work with you and you yeah. get all kinds of opportunities, right? So I think that's that's yeah. super crucial to remember all the time. Um, you know, and in fact, one of the things, uh, it kind of goes back to, I read an article in an interview with Sudeep where um, Cora is one of the best shows I've seen recently on Netflix. And it's amazing. It's so good. And uh, I think um, there's a line that it said that they, they like literally they wrote the entire beats of the show realized it wasn't working they literally discarded that and started from scratch right yeah. so that goes on to show you know it takes time to put an entire beat structure yeah. in place yeah. and tend to realize that it's not working we have to start from ground up yeah. that's what i think the real um, writing is about isn't it all writing is rewriting as they say exactly i agree exactly so you know what um, that that brings me to uh, another part of um, writers and your journey um, okay let's let's assume that the writer is doing the job okay like mm -hmm. the writer is really putting in the grind in terms of giving you a fairly developed draft right um, and you have a draft that you as an agent feel like this is really good to go hmm. you know 
what happens next okay first we hug it out <laughs> and, and we just like feel like fuck this guy worked hard on this one it's honestly um satiating that's the word like when you have that one story that you know like it's like you know there are see there are different kinds of agents there is different kind of producers and everybody will pick at the heart of it what they are intuitively inclined towards yep and of course the power of a studio head is to be intuitively inclined towards the right things it's a huge responsibility with the huge responsibility comes huge power yep yep hashtag spiderman but when that one story which you feel excited about but you're like okay great premise great action cues i want to nurture this script in a point where it's undeniable that that even though it seems like a small film it's so much fun to read it's such a breeze and i want to watch this film and man oh man what if i get this particular actor to read it and they do not want to do such a role but because it's written so well that it's breaking stereotypes and it's making them be like how do i say no to it right and when that writer puts efforts into that script and they're like i'm just going to give this to you just give me like one more day i'm i'm at it i'm a little anxious about it but i'm going to go for it and you know that it's a young writer's anxiety but we are there by their side and then when they send that script that's a great feeling because you haven't even read it yet but you feel that i know where it was and if that person has addressed the things that we've suggested and added their own stuff or maybe discarded some of our suggestions but at the heart of it if we are looking at the same page then it's it's like yes now we will put our best foot forward into making that film happen so now how does that go and as they say it's called packaging it's like um it's like how do i give another <laughs> okay i have a great one for this go for it so um shaadi mein hum tohfe dete hain logon ko mithaiyan dete hain kuch log baskets dete hain jo room mein rakhe rehte hain jo bhi तो आप मिठाई की दुकान में जाएंगे और आपको पता है कि ठीक है गेस्ट आ रहे हैं तो ये बहुत दूर के गेस्ट हैं ये नज़दीकी गेस्ट हैं बट वी वॉन्ट ट्रीट दैम ऑल फाइन एंड फेयर सो वाई डोंट वी टेक दिस बास्केट वाई डोंट वी पुट इन अ फ्यू ड्राई फ्रूट्स ऑन इट वी पुट इन सेवरी बिकॉज ड्राई फ्रूट्स आर टू हेल्दी ऑफ कॉर्स दे मस्ट ऑल्सो ईट सम यू नो रबिश टू दैन कम टू द स्वीट्स एंड दे दे हैव द ग्रेट डिजर्ट्स एंड दैट डिजर्ट इज द स्पेशलिटी ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर टाउन so at it has to Do be not added make me ask what the rubbish means in the real world <laughs> <laughs> i will i will address that too i think the rubbish is important it brings about the balance right okay fine okay and you you have you know a few packets of amazing green tea but you also have some uh, great drinks next to it and it's it's a whole package right so then when you see it people are like inclined to open it up and it actually offers something which is uh to be consumed at different stages of that day right. the yeah. whole wedding right i've had too many weddings in my family so i'm <laughs> just so used to this drill uh so similar to that packaging is basically like a thali you know uh kisi thali mein aap uh, usko kis tarah se dress kar rahe hain us, us thali ko kis tarah se saja rahe hain ki aapko samne wale ko ichha ho usko khane ki aur ye isko kaha ja sakta hai that oh this is very uh business like or you're just thinking about outward in you're not actually trying to tell a story some people feel that way but i feel like it's just nothing but consideration for the audiences let's just remember it's a 15 crore of an investment 15 crore is not easy money for any part yep. any side yep. and if you're bringing that together you might as well make use of it i think it's the job of a writer that if if they're asking for the sort of investment they at least break even you know at least don't put us in the losses right yep. and of course people have make mistakes people have their own cycles and it's a beautiful journey of grief and achievements and the heart has to be in the right place but let's be considered considered towards our audiences so now that we have this thali we look at the script we read the script now if the script is by a senior talent because they have proven to the world that yes they can tell the story and they are with their name and attachment and their guidance and i'm being very idealistic with the way i'm suggesting all of this they're able to bring about that faith in a vidya balan to come on board to portray this character right 
So that's just like the easiest way to go about it. So because we know it in now today's time that an actor's attachment to a project has become so so important. The face of the narrative. So the takeaway here is that okay, uh, there are a lot of uh, parts of Athali, and you would say that an actor as a part of a uh, part of any package is the first most important thing. No, I would say that. It's one. It's one of the most important things. But if it's a senior talent, mm -hmm. you may go to an actor. Got you. If it's a young writer who has just written the most fantastic script, which means you must back it up with a very promising director, the right director for that script, not the most fancy and fashionable director, but the right one for that script. Because we have to be very aware that at the end of it, when everything comes together, it just shouldn't be that we are attending to that actor and hence this director. Yeah. They're attending to the script. That's the most important thing. We don't matter as much as what we are trying to say. So when we have the right director, then as that package, we can take it to an actor that maybe that director has had a relationship with or has worked with in the past. I'm not talking about relationship like an intimate relationship, but you know, as <laughs> <laughs> Good, you had to clarify that. that. <laughs> you know, that, oh, they know each other. They have worked together. Yeah. There's an access to that They have a working relationship and they understand each yeah. other's work, for or sure. That, or that this, because of their, this director's previous work, they are able to attract the right face. And then in the right place, right time, you also know that that actor has been making the most versatile and unpredictable choices. And for example, a Karina Kapoor, right? She's making such phenomenal choices. And based on the interviews that I've heard of her with Anupama Chopra, she's talking about how, you know, it, it's that, that rat race of being at the top, when you get rid of that pressure, uh, you make beautiful choices. Kate Winslet made those choices. I mean, yeah, I was reading that's about the first her. thing that struck me as well. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. so funny when you check out Kate Winslet on uh, just Google her. Okay, and on yeah. the side it says this woman, this actor is known to portray uh, women who are struggling or with dilemmas and whatnot. And I'm like, interesting way to describe an actor. <laughs> but after Titanic, she got the most uh, mainstream feature films, you know, uh, offers. But she chose an indie path, yep. you know, she and then she went on to do Mayor of East Town. And that is what Karina was mentioning is the kind of role I want to do when I read Hansel Mehta's 21 pager or something. And I said yes to Buckingham Murders. And now she's doing an indie film and it's opening up at festivals. So it's a very interesting trajectory. So when you see somebody like her, you're like, maybe in this particular time, as an executive, as an agent, as a manager, I have to find them in that right spot. Yeah. And I also want to be mystical right now and say that I really feel like stories have their stars, you know, like they've come with that timing for their, their themselves. That if this idea has come to a creator, that means is kaani ko kehne ka vakt a chuka hai. Correct. So all these things come together. And then if you're lucky, you find the right partner and then you get the right funding and you go from there. It's very different, right? Like for an idea, which is say a book adaptation. A book has a great, uh, great acclaim in the circles. And you take that book with an adaptation note with by a director to an actor, and that is just ready to go. You know, now just get the work going because you know what the attachments are. That's another way to go about it. But I would definitely say that if you want to make a film for the masses or a film uh, for the OTTs or a theatrical film, you have to be realistic and keep the actor in mind. You have yeah, to uh, right. recognize the requirement of that skill set and what that does to your monies yep. more than anything. Yep. It's easier to just get lost on white pages where you're just thinking about what potentially you could do without, you know, keeping in mind that, you know, there's somebody who needs to play this role yeah. and should be excited to play. Yeah. Plus, there should be an audience to watch this person play this role. Yes, so yes. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of moving parts to it. Um, can you list an example? Can you talk about an example of packaging, potentially about a project that exists and um, fewer people know about how it was set up? Sure. Um, I would like to definitely mention Pata Look. Okay. Uh, One of my most favorite projects ever. Yes, yeah. I, I'm really fond of it. And uh, there are some several Tulsi talent on that front. but it's objectively speaking something that really moves me like the last episode uh, hashtag no spoilers <laughs> the last episode of just Hathi Ram interacting with that yeah. dog yeah. that stays with me and that's I mean I am a cerebral person who understands metaphors but I feel like at that point anybody would understand that metaphor right yep. that's that's like 
like how how rarely do we now remember visuals right that stay with you so thank you so much to all the creators who made what did yeah. what they did so i'll just come to the story it's crazy that project is yeah i, I agree one of our writers sagar haveli he discovered this book story of my assassins by tarun tejpal mm-hmm. and he was like let's adapt this tatta datta being our co-founder and we recognize now this is also learning on uh, packaging that he at that point had was just coming of age with his writing journey and we needed more resources with us to get going with the making of the project because you need more people to be on your side to say basically you need more people uh to side with your faith and say that yeah let's tell that story but you have to be a little smart when you do that so what tatta did was he took the book to sudeep sharma and sudeep sharma at that point was not in the head head space of going with, ab- along with the long st- long format and he was very comfortable and excelling with you know feature film format which is also a long format of course but he read the book and he was very uh, moved by it he was on board and then we helped set up the writers room which included sagar aveli gunjeet chopra hardik mehta these four people with the book and sudeep sharma we created the writers room we also brought on board clean slate which was then anushka and karunesh's company which is now just karunesh's company and it went to amazon and with a much of a hustle we found the right executives on the other side and we sort of could see from a distance that they are given the right sort of time to work on those story that they want to tell to rehash it and to bring to the forefront what they really want to say back then it was called jamuna bar and that's how batalok happened when the resources came together when somebody out there discovered a book that they were very moved by that's so good right and yeah. it just started with one writer enjoying a book and then yeah. another person finding so much potential and uh, doing the rounds of getting everybody yeah, on board yeah and making a smart suggestion yeah. and uh, i feel like i am grateful to what that did back then cuz exactly. now we have sudeep who's you know with gunjeet chopra from patalok to kohra now as a co-creator along with diggy writing kohra where sudeep being the showrunner randeep jha being the director these guys these guys sort of made another narrative from the same family and it gives you that space to explore the right the, the, the character so deeply just because it's long format it's a bigger playground you know you can dive deeper into a psyche of a character and you can really discover something that a feature film wouldn't allow you to discover yeah so that's what successful narratives do sorry i'm getting messages <laughs> no worries um no this is so interesting it's it's so fascinating and i think um we should talk about how much time it took from that book being identified till yeah. the show coming up i think that is um the opposite of dog ears i feel <laughs> like i i really just to scream out loud and i i actually used to there was a moment of, like last year i used to like be like in the middle of the road why is nobody telling us why didn't anybody tell us that film making and being in films takes so much fucking time exactly exactly they should put that in courses right yeah and the biggest skill i think any filmmaker or talent can have is patience right you just need to have that grit and patience I to agree. see it through what you're doing i mean i mean so many so many the biggest minds in this on that have ever occurred to this planet have just regarded patience as one of the biggest highest virtues right see the thing is that it takes time it just does yeah. because um that's why you need to have like four to five buckets that's why a uh, young writer or a senior writer needs to be aware that okay i've created the bible and pilot for this ep- this particular narrative which i'm in love with but let me not be so self indulgent that i go putting extra amount of research which is not required and sometimes also is considered as procrastination <laughs> and once i'm done writing it i go to the narrative which i have been not been giving enough time to so i write this and i get it out with my agents 
have them handle the strategy of it get it read by the people now let's understand this right i in my beautiful little seaside apartment have thought about an idea and just by the stroke of luck it happens to be an idea because of my mainstream sensibilities that is an interesting enough premise that has a po- possibility to be turned into a cinematic experience now i have to put it on paper in a way which is sparkling if it is not my agents will give notes to it and they will ask me to sharpen it or my friends and my trusted mentors they will ask me to rewrite it if they are truly your mentors and if they're truly your well wishers they will ask you to rewrite yep, it right yep. once you're out there with the right one the one that is pitch worthy as they say recognize that the person on the other side their source of living comes through reading and putting forward ideas that will make people money right and that's what they do day in and day out they hear elevator pitches they hear they read synopses and they read uh, they go for narrations they read scripts and they doze off in the middle of those scripts and then they remember which one it was and then they mix two characters of two scripts and what not right yep yep i'm just kidding but the point is you have one proper shot with them and you have to acknowledge that time is of essence no matter how senior or a junior writer you are so this whole process of them just reading and coming back to you which i also feel is an area where our industry needs to do a better job all the readers need to do a better job including me that saying oh we are interested let's do this takes about 3 or 4 months on an average right the whole process the back and forth the meeting the scheduling the calendars all of that and once that happens then comes the negotiation part which again can be shortened which again can be a ground where we all agree a bit faster and then comes the development process so there's there's this one door that opens up for development and then you have to further get another uh, sort of approval of step 2 of the de- of the green signal of producing it once the development is sorted once the story is at a point where not just the bible and the pilot but the episodic breakdown of all the episodes is just stunning that they're like oh yes let us definitely go and shoot it so that then means you have to go on recce you have to find the cast you have to figure out the other directors you have to figure out all the moving parts of it and then when you come bring it all together then you then you go into the pre prod phase of so basically pre prod has already begun but you go into the phase of beginning to shoot and that takes 90 days after 90 days comes the post production i mean it's like five yeah. stages of editing and then after that furthermore on the marketing front yeah and it's then, a long process yeah so i think pata looked took definitely longer because they got a lot of time they got two years to properly develop it and i feel that's beautiful that's yeah. why it is it is what it is but on an average you would say that from today to the time it releases somewhere around 3 years for a yeah, series it's a long time. Yeah, it is a long time. I mean, your baby. But that, it kind of shows also, right? Like uh, the project, because it got so much time to develop, it also has yeah. come out so well. Um, you know, because you are kind of like at the vantage point. You're like the glue running through the f- different fragments of uh, in the industry. If a writer asks you or a filmmaker asks you, where do I start? Like in terms of what kind of a project should I take up, or what in in today 2023 december what is working and what are producers uh, looking for what would you answer is this a writer who has already written something or they're just beginning let's say that they have written a few scripts but they're still like starting out because a senior writer you know they would obviously be getting incoming opportunities right. but somebody who is out there trying to hustle and get their way in right um i would say that uh, i think uh, you know it's um, it's possibly the most difficult question to answer because if i may just go a step piche and i talk about a person who wants to tell stories and they are like mujhe bhi film banani hai right first and foremost they have to recognize whether they have the discipline and the grit to sit on the table and show up every day regardless and put pen to paper have the maturity to say that i will write bad and i will write regardless endurance beyond talent that's very simple 
once you get to the end of your first draft then you rewrite it then whether do you have the conscience to uh, acknowledge that no no this this one you know could have i can work a little harder on this it doesn't it isn't enough that i have finished the script i have to go harder and i have to work a little harder on my skills i have to educate myself a bit better i have just stay with the scene a bit more once you've had that which is what you're doing necessary uh, in basically on that script is expressing yourself beyond what people want to watch beyond what has been told and beyond what is releasing and what is making money you have to focus on expression as sincerely as possible because your job right now is not to woo anybody with the kind of idea it is but the kind of skills that you have right is it a great scene written with amazing sense of you know economics and action cues and and great dialogue writing and an awareness of the character's headspace if we are able to achieve that beauty even if it is a film that can be shot inside an apartment such as this beautiful one the idea is to be able to woo yourself with your expression that's how a writer or a creator or a storyteller discovers their voice once you've had that once you feel like okay i can do something here i feel like i'm somewhere there then i feel like you need to understand what's your circle of integrity which means okay i cannot write a film like um leo or a salar or uh, uh wait i have not even watched these films so let me not mention <laughs> them <laughs> a jawan or a pathan but maybe i can write something like mai hu na you know i i know that i am interested in comedy but i have not explored action which doesn't mean that i can't write action because i feel like in today's time people are like so stereotypical they like immediately just can't wait to put people into boxes oh this person uh, wholesome uh, slice of life the tv sort of narrative you know this person with action cues and this and that we want something like jawan and pathan that's not how a writer functions a writer is a writer is a writer which chetanya often says which means how do you know if a person can write sci-fi like how does one know that one knows that by their temperament by their the books they have read by their political opinions by the way they operate amongst their friends by their ethics and values and what pisses them off as people and then eventually on professional grounds if they have that sort of a depth to approach something right so i would say that the answer to what should a young writer write is keep in mind that you have to be sincere towards your expression but you also have to recognize that you are definitely like ask yourself am i writing this to make entertain my friends or am i writing this to just entertain myself have that conversation with yourself and once you know that no i definitely want to make people laugh and i want to ensure that people are enjoying to this dance sequence maybe you want to write a musical because you feel like you've been so inspired by music and i want to tell a love story because you are in love and you want the world to know how it feels so you tell it in a way which is in consideration with the audiences you know i don't want to give you answers about hey this genre works and that works and this young adult script is really going to get big because nobody knows honestly yeah actually i knew that you wouldn't give that answer which is why i wanted you to give this answer which is the correct answer i just feel like i'm giving all of us all the monologues <laughs> but you know i i was so um you know into it like what you were talking about because um when i'm also writing these are questions that are running through my mind all the time you know i'm writing something will somebody pick it up not pick it up should i be writing something that somebody wants but to be honest yeah. um when you have something to tell that power is so strong that then you stop caring about what others want to hear you know um you yeah. just want to say it as a writer yeah and put it put pen to paper over there and the real discipline comes in ensuring that your craft is at its best when you're trying to yeah. say it right that's where i think the real growth happens not knowing what to say but how to say it um absolutely but then there is a good chance that people will not like uh, produce your script you know people will not be out there yeah. uh, willing to invest they but what i hope happens is that they see the talent that you bring to the table you know 
yeah yeah i feel like it's really helpful and healthy to be realistic you have to dream but recognize that your dream has to convert into a goal that's when you achieve it and you be have to be realistic to know and this is more or less st- statistical difficult word to pronounce but not really <laughs> but <laughs> that 90% of spec work doesn't go on the floors yep but of the 90% great spec work leads your idol to the most beautiful doors that's that's so true that is you know, so true and yep. arthi raval pandey is an example of that yeah. so see once you've written something that you're like oh man i have really really worked my ass off to express myself through the skill set then you need to step back and be like all right is my aspiration to work with i already existing ideas by other senior writers where i can be in the writers room because that's how i operate really well or do i actually have original ideas of mine which can lend themselves to the right economics can fit somewhere in the yep. scheme of things because well whether you like it or not that's how the industry functions it's an expensive hobby so you have to find your many ways around it once you feel like all right you know what i actually do want to write a rom- romance comedy right so then you then you start to bring in a few elements in that cool i know i want to write this but once i know that this is a romance comedy which means it has to be romantic it has to make me move with the chemistry of the uh, two characters and the and the 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 push and pull and the meet cute and and the and what is it the kind of way they're conversing once i'm sure of this and secondly once i'm sure that i want to make people laugh then you begin expressing it all over again then you go back to putting everybody aside because mm-hmm. now your job is to tell me a story a very moving romance that people actually get moved by and people are not feeling moved by romances lately people yeah, are not true. aware of a perspective on romance that they must follow right that karan johar and yash chopra they offered it to them and now they are a little lost and they don't know what story to believe in so you have to write something which is telling the truth you have to offer a truth whether it's a truth that you know uh, you like it or not or they like it or not but you have to tell something that's a little embarrassing like if you write it and if you're like fuck if my friend reads it yep um they're going to judge me a little bit that If yeah. you're reached there, I think yeah. this is something Tarantino said. Then I feel like something magical may happen. Yeah. And then a right, right person on the other side, the executive, will say things like, um, you know, um, this one maybe needs a song. So then, instead of disregarding that possibility, you can make it into a song that's, you know, a musical that we have not seen before, right? That. majority and that consideration is very important because like think about this right you write five scenes from a point where the character meets for the first time to a point where they have their first fight you have five scenes which means how many pages approximately 15 pages or yeah. so instead of that you put a song it's an economical choice regardless of what you believe in or not but if you choose the right kind of song and the right way of going about it then you are offering something fun you know that's so true it can be an experience in itself yeah. yeah like those choices i'm talking about i'm not saying that oh like just put a um, munni badnam just because you have to have a munni who goes badnam no but like people also do make those choices right to just to uh, increase the reach yeah. of the film which is fair yeah and the great of those i mean i love so many of these item songs that are just so gorgeously put together and i would like to mention that samantha what she did with pushpa was an was a very smart choice by the directors and who's who made that choice because you might say that it's the objectification of a woman but you're choosing Samantha who's very willing to do something which is very unexpected of her right and that's refreshing the choreography has been put with so much grit and effort and that song is that's the genius song you can't deny that so that you got to gain respect for you know it's fair that. no that's that's so true um last couple of questions before we wrap um we spoke about the successes and how it should be idealistically now let's if you can cite an example of say a script or a writer who really brought their a game to the table you know and um, you were super excited to take it to the market and see where it goes but it did not you know go where it's supposed to um you what happened after that like just to oh man you like 
reminding me of my heartbreaks are are i used to i used to say that uh, i used to call these events my professional heartbreaks because you know like you know like like i have been known to be this really passionate person and somebody who also feels like yeah your passion is contagious the same thank you saying that but it also needs to be consistent which is my learning which is my coming of age <laughs> but like i you know my my mentors at the lc used to say that your passion is really high in the beginning but it somewhere fizzles down along the line and i feel like the way and the reason why that happened was because i realized that oh i was gaga over this one story that me as namrata vadwani or namrata or golu minus all these things you what really wanted to watch so i persevered behind it and then slowly and gradually reality happened to that story where people were like yeah but why do i want to watch the story when i'm just experiencing it back at home why do i want to relive that experience when it's not offering me escape or hey i don't want to watch people talk to each other about the subject that doesn't have much to do with me about oh this woman getting pregnant after the husband has passed away whatever those events were beautiful beautiful nurtured stories but that taught you that okay uh i must just get up and feel better you know like cool okay it didn't happen why didn't it happen you understand that in retrospect honestly uh, you also understand with your other colleagues in the team who feel very differently than you do who operate very differently than you do who watch very different films and their idea of entertainment is so far beyond yours and that's what you need in a team right you acknowledge that okay so this film even in this in the room of 20 people only two want to watch and hence this is a smaller niche film which means i can't take it to the producers where their dreams and aspirations are clearly to cross a certain benchmark in the theaters that doesn't make sense yeah it's a clear mismatch somewhere it does somewhere magic does happen got it oh really? so that's why you persevere along with it so you then after all these efforts and years and months and weeks of different experiences you recognize that ee wali story mainstream hai lekin ab uska time ja chuka hai right you are a little too late those people have acknowledged those stories already what is a new thing that you're offering people are brutal that when i love it and then you discover something which is a, a story that i'm currently persevering with another very talented writer it's been we've been on that story for 3 years now and we have nurtured it from a story which was set inside one room to now a massy film which is we are dreaming of the biggest of the stars in the country simply sorry one second 3 years for developing a story i mean yeah <laughs> ha, i i've heard internally that oh you must charge 20% for that writer <laughs> but no i mean um, it wasn't that consistently 3 years and only if putting a force of that talent but must have been on and off but yeah. like that conversation right that yes of course that development could have been faster but it took it, it the writer was writing different things the other series were releasing and what not and with that they were writing something which felt like a little story about these two characters and then we felt like oh wait hang on but we want to make something more fun yep and also we want to be smart yep we also want to make money yeah. we also want our mom and dad to be on the in the theaters <laughs> we also want to talk to shahrukh khan about that yeah and we can actually do it and that's why we're in our circle of integrity not like i'm pushing the right nahi yaar tu likh yaar tu gusaiz mein item song for no reason we created something that's so circle much fun of integrity now. very well put yeah yeah and yeah. now it's you know touch wood uh, picked by a very major studio when we're very excited about the possibility of where that's going so yeah that blast that that <laughs> that's how it feels in the heart sometimes <laughs> but um, that's one Pretty example cool. i wish i could yeah. give you more i i possibly will come back to you once the release no for sure happens. and one last question to you before we wrap because you're so sensitive not just towards writers but also producers and you understand both sides of the table quite well i would love for you to share your thoughts on you know it's a question that keeps coming up when i'm when i'm talking to writers said why why are very few people in the industry who know how to give feedback you know so what are your thoughts or insights on what makes for a good feedback to a writer hmm i think uh, we all have to realize that we are vessels okay like 
you know, you are a vessel who has been chosen to tell that story. And if you aren't going to attend to that calling for that particular idea, mm -hmm. that story will slowly travel to somebody else. And I would like to say that, practically speaking, it happens, right? That yep. too many ideas are all at the same time float in the atmosphere. Yep. And if you're like, hey, wait, we just thought about that too. Why are you telling that story? So I feel like that, of course, um, it's, 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 it's a different tangent altogether. But we need to recognize that we are growing important जो मैं कह रही हूँ और जो आप समझ रहे हैं जो आप कह रहे हैं मैं समझ रही हूँ वो सिर्फ वो वो उसमें हमारे ईगो को आने की ज़रूरत है ही नहीं। So एक तो बात वो है दूसरी बात ये है कि किसी ने अपने मतलब दिल को थोड़ा निकाल के और उसको एक जैसे स्लाइस करके थोड़े से उसके यू नो हिस्से रख दिए अपने पेपर पे और बहुत and I think everybody would relate to that because everybody had, has had that experience of being a moon on the stage or narrating a poem or something. Then the other person's job is to be considerate and honest. Don't say something just because it's so snarky and sassy that it's fun to say. Say something that's actually going to let the other person come back to the writing table, right? If I say something that's going to like put the writer into like this rabbit hole of depression and self-doubt for a month, then all of us are losing, right? They are not writing on time. The producers are receiving the script on time. The actor is going to definitely pick another script in the meantime, because, well, not everybody is as lucky. We're just all missing out on a chance. So just put the fact out there that your character is death in your But say it in a way that is technical, that this character um, is not going through a journey, they're not feeling uncomfortable at any instance in the script that that you told us as a setup that this character had a terrible experience with his father or a mother in the childhood, but we never see the impact of it in the short scheme of time. Then why the hell are you telling me that information? But don't use the word hell. Why are you telling me that fact? Don't even say that. Say something like it is considered, you can consider um, working on the backstory of the character and offering them a character journey, a character arc, which makes for a more fulfilling experience. So you're using technicality, script, screenwriting notes, to attend to that aspect, which definitely is a learning ground for a writer. Mm -hmm. Instead of just saying ki madha nahi aaya yaar, right? Yeah, that's that's which really the worst kind of feedback that any writer can potentially hear. Actually, Neil Diamond said something really interesting that <laughs> when it's contrary to what I just said, so just forget yeah. everything I said. But he's like, <laughs> he said something like, if somebody's saying something very precise, mm -hmm. then you may may not agree with it. Yep. But if somebody's saying something vague, that I don't know what is it, but in this thing, no, kuch, the beat, something was missing, then you better look into it. Yeah, then the responsibility of finding the flaws are uh, on, on the writer's Yeah, end, right? I mean, yeah. it's different ways of looking at it, but I feel like in this city, you have to find people who will be by your side right? Uh, and behaving with you just the way they were, irrespective of whether you've won an Oscar or that you're not able to sell your script. Sure. You have to have those people by your side. You have to people have people who will really, who are really your well-wishers, who really want to give you right feedback, want to guide you. If you have this sorted out, right? then you are going to get past anything. Of course, uh, not to mention discipline and endurance. For sure. If there was a cloning machine, you would be definitely one of those people I would love to clone. Oh, and you know, just get a that. role at every different uh, company that exists in media today. I, I don't feel like I'm at the peak of what I'm trying to do. Like, I feel like I can also be better at reading or better at, you know, faster at doing things. But the <laughs> intentions are there, right? And you're already yeah. doing such good work. I feel like um, every company can do with an Amrita, you know? <laughs> every I, company can do with a Neil too. Are, are, are. But um, I'm so glad that we could do this. Um, and I hope different people who haven't had a chance to work with you do get a chance to work with you. Thank you um, that. But I just can't wait to see how your career shapes up Thank and you. what different kind of stories you have to tell the next time we bring you on board. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. and. 
I'm still nervous about the fact that uh, I said some stuff. But, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for honestly inviting me. It all one always feels that like I said, "Kya ukhar liya hai ki koi kisi ko bula raha hai." That's genuinely the feeling. But I really hope that uh, it helps people. Don't ever feel that way, honestly. But uh, because don't tell me how to feel. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but it's one of those things where uh, people working behind the scenes are making real difference. And yeah, I we believe don't so, often, uh, you know, uncover the story. So this is that's the whole point of this podcast, which brings me to guys uh, and girls and everyone else. Please check out our other episodes. We have real conversations like these, and uh, do let us know in comment section below if there are any other kind of conversations you want to hear. You'd be happy to, you know, scout for those people and get them on board. Thank you so much for listening.